Welcome to Catholic Conversations. This is your host, Adrian Ponseca, and today I have a great treat for you today. I told you last episode that I would be posting two back-to-back -back talks, and I apologize because I kind of uh, did not post it back-to-back. -back. It's been a couple weeks. I've been pretty caught up in other things, but I won't waste too much of your time. Uh, we're going to throw you right into the talk on the great saint, Saint Maria de la Luz Camancho, a great Cristero martyr. It's such a great confidence and trust in Our Lady and Our Lord with such vigor to fight for Christ the King. You're going to love this episode and let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, notification bell, and comment down below what you think. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, soapbox and negativities, positivities, or anything in between, and I'll throw you into the episode right Talk now. Talk about the queen, exactly, yeah. Real quick, uh, I was brought to my attention that Gabe's uh, whole idea of carrying around a statue of Our Lady it works out perfectly for King St. Ferdinand, how he would carry the ivory statue of Our Lady in his pouch everywhere he went, everywhere he'd go, he'd take that. So there you go, Gabe is already ahead of the game. He, without, he's just, it's the blood of, uh, of the Castillo, right? Gabriel there you go. Castillo, there you go. Okay, so the next talk will be on Maria de la Luz. She was a Cristero martyr, amazing, beautiful saint. There she is on the left, and then on the right is a image of uh, one of the Cristero martyrs. Miguel Pro, and so the uh, what do you, if, if you haven't seen For Greater Glory, I highly recommend it. This is like mandatory watching, especially for Texans. A couple weeks ago, I actually traveled to El Paso and I climbed the uh, Monte Cristo Rey, which is a statue with a humongous. Uh, it's a mountain with a giant statue of our, late, our Lord at the top. And when you stand there and you look out, uh, you can actually see Mexico, New Mexico, and Texas all uh, from the top of the mountain. And so literally across the border, Catholics were being slaughtered by the Mexican government, um, right? Literally, like you could see it from the top of the mountain. So anyway, go back to Maria de la Luz. So Maria de la Luz, she was born right before the persecution of the Catholics in Mexico started. And so she actually was uh, raised at a convent school and whenever she was uh, going to school, she actually was an actress. So she'd go and she'd be in plays. Uh, her most famous roles, she played in Joan of, as Joan of Arc and, uh, and Mary of Scotland. And so this, she was an amazing actress. And it was actually said that she could become a professional actress if she had desired to pursue acting as a career. During this time period, though, as she's leaving school, as she's about to graduate from school, that's whenever the Gaia's Law started being implemented. And for y'all who don't know, the Gaia's laws were some of the harshest laws ever implemented on the Catholic Church, ever, in the entire world. Catholic priests were executed. Catholic priests were kicked out of the country. They were, churches were shut down. They were turned into other kinds of buildings. They were turned into barns and barracks for soldiers. It was a horrific time period to be a Catholic in Mexico. But the Mexican people who loved Our Lady, who loved Our Lord, had the calling cry that Pius IX gave to them, which was, Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. And they would shout that constantly, long live Christ the King. And so Maria de la Luz, finding out and seeing all these things happen, where it got to the point where there was about one priest for every city. Imagine that. Imagine if the entire city of Houston, in the greater Houston area, all the people were served by one priest. That'd be impossible for that one priest. That'd be in a horrible time. So what would happen? So Maria de la Luz realized what we need is the lay people need to stand up and start fighting for Christ the King. And so what did she do? She started at the age of 15. She became a catechist, the same age as many of you guys here. She became a catechist, and she told the people, y'all need to learn the faith. You need to study hard because we have to keep the faith and spread the faith because there is not going to be a priest to come and teach you the faith. There's not going to be some great teacher, some PhD candidate, some teacher that graduated from university to come teach because those people were kicked out. Those people were killed. If you were an educated person in the Catholic faith, gone. Sisters, gone. They banned the ca wearing of cassocks. They banned wearing the habits. All these things were happening. 
So what did she do? She started getting people together in homes. In everyone's homes, they started teaching the faith in their homes. And she would write plays to teach the faith to each other so that they could start performing them, helping the kids learn their faith. And she would write songs. It was said that she had an angelic voice. And so she would sing the songs, and in the song, she would always make sure that she could incorporate the phrase, Cristo Rey, Viva Cristo Rey, because she wanted to implement that idea in people's minds that Christ is king. Calles is not king. The president of Mexico is not king. The secular rulers are not king. Christ is king. And we have to be obedient to Christ if the government tells us to do otherwise. Very important. So, one day, Maria de la Luz, she's an older, she's in her early 20s. She's about 20, 21 years old. And she throws this beautiful party. Hey, her dad, uh, they set up this massive party. People are coming in. They're all wearing their best outfits. And they have flowers set up. And everyone's coming in. Everyone's having a great time. And then night falls. And what happens? A man sneaks into the back of the house and they come in and they come into a separate room and the man walks up and you hear the words in Troibo Aratari Dei a day in Quilitificario Ventuto Meum and mass has begun because they would throw these parties at people's houses to try to distract from the government because saying holy mass was illegal you could not say holy mass and so the priest would sneak in in the dead of night in the midst of the party. And they would come in. They'd sneak into the other room. And he'd just begin mass and people would congregate inside. And it was said that when Maria de la Luz didn't, was not able to attend Holy Mass, every night you would hear her mummering, come, come, Lord Jesus, come. In her sleep, it would be the words coming out of her mouth. Imagine not being able to go to Mass. Many of us today do not like going to Mass. We are like, oh, we have to go to Mass. But imagine a time and a day which may happen to us in our time. And most people, Maria de la Luz, when she was a kid, she didn't think this was going to happen to her. She was going to a convent school. She had no idea that Mass would be unavailable, that priests would be unavailable. This could happen to us. This could happen to you and it could happen to me. Do we love the Holy Mass? Will we fight for the Holy Mass? If the Holy Mass became illegal, would we do everything in our power to make sure that the Holy Mass became available and that we went, risking life and limb? That's a question for you. Think about it. Okay, one story that I need to tell y'all, and I want to read it from y'all, from the book on her life. So, one of the other things of her li about her life was that she fought against immorality in the, in the secular culture. We think about ourselves and how much of secular culture is utterly and completely degenerate. And we become desensitized to it because it happens so much. Think about the billboards we see. Think about the things that come up on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter. Everywhere we go, we see immorality. So what did Maria de la Luz do? Maria de la Luz shuddered. Once more, her glance swept over the lured advertisements in front of the movie house. We'll soon stop that, was her low voice comment to her companions. Take these handbills and give one to every person you meet. I'll take my post outside the theater. Four of you stand on the street corners, and the rest of you distribute your bills to the homes in this district. Maria de la Luz was protesting, protesting against an immoral picture being shown at a prominent theater in Mexico City. She had called her assistants together and given them handbills of protest that she had printed. But Maria, argued Carmen, what if some of those brutal communists see us and beat us and drag us off to jail? You know, Maria, that they have done so for less than this. Carmen, says Maria, haven't you got a guardian angel? Ask him to protect you. We shouldn't be afraid to brave some danger for Christ the King. As the girls hurried down the street, they heard the theater manager shouting at Maria de la Luz, get away from here, you contemptible little meddler. 
amazing. Do we have that zeal to fight against degenerate culture? To go out and protest against things that are evil, that need to be rejected against the public square. But what about freedom of speech? Okay, well, use your freedom of speech. If they can do that, then why can't you stand out and say, don't go, do not attend? How many movies today have blasphemies? Constantly, every five minutes, they blaspheme the holy name of our Lord. And yet we don't even think twice about it. Here's one thing you could do if you don't go outside and protest these things. At least bow your head at every time you hear blasphemy against our Lord. But because of her actions, and here's the theme of today, moral courage. Because of her actions, she lost so many friends. She was rejected. She was said that she would come home and she would throw herself onto her bed and start weeping. But she said she never let anyone see her cry. The only person she would confide in was her confessor. Other than that, she said, it is better to suffer in silence. The last thing that I want to do before we finish up is the story of her death. A beautiful story, and I'm just going to uh, read it to you because it's going to just be a better story if I read it to you. Down the street was heard the roar of voices. Margelli smiled. In a few seconds, his 60 stout lads would be lined up before him. Only Centario Park lay between the town hall and the Catholic church. They could easily set out for the town hall, proceed through the park, rush upon the church, and after they had fired the 10 rounds of ammunition he was providing for each, hurry back to the town hall where he would welcome them. It was Sunday. He was going to teach these Catholics a lesson they wouldn't forget. Margelis saluted the red and black uniformed youth as they drew up in front of the town hall. They were in high spirits, shouting lustily, Long live the revolution! Margelis talked to them, working them up until he could see that they were savage in the intensity with which they cursed and clenched their fists. He assured them of their own personal safety after the matter was accomplished. They had Garrido's promise for that each man was provided with a revolver, ammunition, and a good swig of good, strong whiskey. Thus fortified, they made their way into the park. Their first move was to drape a red and black flag over the arms of Monumental Mission Cross in the center of the park and affix it a picture of Marheli. Then one of the soldiers began to harangue them, vehemently denouncing all things Catholic. A youth of 15 followed, winning cheers for his vitriolic speech. The liberator of Tabasco has set us a glorious example which we must follow. Religion is our enemy, and we must get rid of it by killing all the priests, by burning holy images in all churches. We count on the support of the government which looks upon our determination with sympathy and it is ready to give us a helping hand. The president of the republic is powerless to prevent us, for Garrido, and not he, is the real ruler of Mexico City. The Reds are going to burn the church. The cry circulated like wildfire, and Maria de la Luz thoughts flew at once to the 200 children now at mass. She made up her mind, putting on her green silk sport, sport dress with a white satin collar. She set out with her younger sister, Lupita, why are you dressed up, her sister inquired. When we are going to defend Christ the King, answered Maria de la Luz, ought we not look our best? As they approached the church, the orating in the park was in the last menacing stages. A fierce surge of anger and hatred had swept over the mob. In the church, Father Raphael was saying the prayers at the foot of the altar. I will go unto the altar of God, because thou art God my strength. The great mass had begun, and there was no room for fear. They were climbing Calvary together with Christ. What ineffable honor if some of them were to mount the cross with him, as Peter and Paul and the other holy martyrs of the church had done before. Maria de la Luz took her stand at the church door, and if any red entered, he would do so over her dead body. A youth in black and red uniform approached the two girls. Maria de la Luz recognized him as a boy that she had prepared for First Communion. Miss Camancho, he began earnestly, they are going to burn the church. Please, go away. Maria de la Luz, her eyes took on the old determined look. The boy might as well have been addressing a stone wall. 
When the church bells rang announcing the elevation, the cries of the mob rose to a pitch that could only mean one thing. They were about to attack. A paralyzing fear gripped those kneeling in the church. Somewhere, a revolver cracked. The priest, fearing desecration, hastened to consume the sacred species. Outside, Maria de la Luz met the onrush, the young girl's courage facing them alone, daring them to shoot her. Compelled their respect, a few began to recede, but others started to move towards her. Curse be Christ the King, someone cried. Praise be Christ the King, said Maria de la Luz. The red leader, furious that they should be thwarted by a mere girl, turned to his comrades and shouted, Long live the revolution! And this was a signal to fire. Maria de la Luz shouts, Long live Christ! And she struck dead on the steps of the church. And her cry was drowned out by the fire of guns. And Maria de la Luz became a martyr of the church, one of the first martyrs of Catholic action, a group of Catholics of lay people who are fighting to bring about the faith in their lives by their action, by their catechesis as lay people. And she was struck dead, defending Holy Mother Church, giving the people time to escape. And many, most of the children escaped through the front, through the back door, and the priest was able to consume the species so our Lord was not desecrated because of the bravery of Maria de la Luz. Do we have that bravery, the bravery of a young woman who had both moral courage and physical courage to face the onslaught of the enemy. And when we hear people blaspheming the name of God, when people shout death to Christ the King, and nowadays it's become popular to have Satanism all over the place. Here in Texas, we had Satanism, black masses in Houston, Texas. When we hear people shout, hell Satan, our response should be, and she will crush his head because Our Lady, her heel, will crush the head of Satan. And when people say death to Christ the King, we should respond, long live Christ the King. When we hear blasphemies against our Lord, we need to stand up and have moral courage. If it's our friends, our family, people at school, we need to stand up for Christ the King, whatever the consequences that may follow. So let's have that virtue. Let's pray for that virtue. Let's pray for that grace. We'll end with a Hail Mary. And we'll ask for the intercession of Maria de la Luz. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Santa Maria de la Luz. Santa Maria de la Luz. Santa Maria de la Luz. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise be to God. I hope you enjoyed that talk on Saint Santa Maria de la Luz de Camancho. And she was an amazing Cristero martyr. Beautiful saint. I uh, cannot recommend her enough. And if you want to read about her life, you make sure you look in the description down below because I will have a link to her book, to the book about her life. Well, at least the one that I read. And you can learn about her from there and get more details, along with other great saints. And the book is called Heroines for Christ, published by Mediatrix Press. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, soapboxes, negativities, or positivities, or anything in between, feel free to email me at fonsecaproduction at gmail.com. Or the easiest way nowadays is to just comment down below in the description or in the comment section of YouTube. And without further ado, let's pray a Hail Mary and we will conclude the episode. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tuum mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostrae, Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.